Roll Tide, and welcome to Crimson Tide Rewind. Live from Bob Howard's Victory Grill in Vestavia Hills, presented by the Alabama Department of Public Health, who reminds Alabama, don't wait, vaccinate. Roll Tide, everyone. This is Roger Hoover alongside former Alabama linebacker Corey Reamer. And Corey, Roll Tide, not necessarily a game to rewind from this past Saturday, but how was your open day, weekend? How was everything going? It was great, great. Got to, got to watch a lot of football. You know, we had we didn't have a game on. It was good, good for the team, get some rest, find uh, – Find some time to relax before they hit this little stretch of SEC play that opens up this weekend. But great overall weekend. There's some good football on. We got to watch a lot of football, which I was excited about. How about you? Yeah, very similar. Uh, staying on the couch pretty much the entire day. Yeah, Watched about everything I could, you know, from Florida and, and Mississippi State yep. picking off in Starkville all the way to that fantastic finish in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, that was a good one to end on for sure. There was a bunch of good games. Got to, uh, we were excited to see a lot of teams that were out there, you know, finally facing some – a tougher competition on their schedules. We've, you know, Ole Miss is still one of those teams that we haven't seen face uh, some a, a tough team up until this point. Uh, but Tennessee finally got a, a tough road test with Oklahoma. Um, a lot of good games around the league. It was fun to watch. There's a lot of those teams that we're going to be facing down the road and, and some surprise performances, especially from Vanderbilt. You know, this is a team that is, you know, everybody's always counted out as an easy win for the schedule. And, they just keep going out there, and Clark Lee's got that team fighting, uh, giving Missouri a top 10 ranked team all they wanted this this past weekend. It was a fun game to watch, fun Saturday, and did, did the same exact thing yesterday, watch all the NFL I could possibly get. There you go. So Alabama and Georgia both had open dates, but even still, college game day, all throughout all the college games we were watching, still people were talking about what's ahead coming up this Saturday between the Crimson Tide and Bulldogs. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the marquee game of the season so far. Easily the biggest matchup that we've seen. Um, and I think everybody's excited to uh, to see what this Alabama team and, and this Georgia team, we saw Georgia get tested a little bit. Um, you know, two weeks ago against Kentucky, Alabama's looked pretty good. They've – the scores have really been different maybe than what the game felt like up – you know, especially in the first half. Alabama ends up running away with uh, the Wisconsin game. It's – you know, a lot of these games have felt closer, but the scores don't indicate how close they were. And now you finally get this matchup. You know, Kirby Smart's over there licking his chops. He's got an opportunity to, to face Alabama, a Nick saban -less Alabama. And uh, we all know that Alabama's really gotten the better of Georgia, especially over the last, what, 10 years. One loss, I believe, is what it is in the national championship. And it's been some great matchups. This rivalry has really, you know, really blossomed with Kirby leaving Alabama, taking that Georgia job, and him taking the same um, – things that Coach Saban did in Tuscaloosa, implementing them over in Georgia. And we've seen the success that he's been able to have uh, coaching the same style, recruiting a lot of the same players. And uh, he's got a lot of guys on that staff that are also, you know, descendants of the Nick Saban coaching tree. So uh, this is going to be a great matchup, completely different look than what we've seen for all the last eight or nine matchups that we've had between these two teams. You know, Kayla DeBoer comes in with a completely different philosophy on offense and Kay Womack on the defensive side. Usually we always got these, you know, it was fun to watch because the defenses were always playing the same. It was a lot of the same 3-4 uh, defense and now it's a completely different matchup and we'll see, uh, see how it looks on Saturday. It's going to be a fun one. So we're going to talk all about Alabama against Georgia as we preview what's coming up on Saturday. We'll take a look back at the three wins that Alabama's posted already this season, plus talk about the SEC and college football as well. And really, for the next hour, we invite your phone calls. If you'd like to join us on the show, please give us a call at 877-202-BAMA. That's 877-202-2262. As we're with you for the next hour from Bomb Howers here in Vestavia Hills with Crimson Tide Rewind. This is Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Milrow with time, looking, firing deep. He's got a man, wide open, catches made, 40, 30, 20, 10, touchdown Alabama. The deuce got loose for the first time in a Bama uniform. Ryan Williams takes it to the house, 84 yards, touchdown Bama. 
And of course, it's Chris Stewart on the call of the first touchdown for Ryan Williams week one against Western Kentucky. Since then, three more touchdowns. The freshman phenom from Sarah Land, Ryan Williams, already leading the way. Ten catches, 285 yards, four touchdowns for the Crimson Tide. You can keep up with stats like that and really everything Alabama with the Alabama Crimson Tide mobile app presented by Cadence Bank. It's available at the App Store and Google Play. Download the Alabama Crimson Tide mobile app now for free. Before we go to the phones, I mean, Ryan Williams, we had had so much buzz, hype around this number one recruit for this last signing class, and three games in, he's delivered. Yeah, and you, I don't know about you, but when we see five-star recruits coming in as freshmen, I always am hesitant before I just jump in and think that they're going to be, you know, the next great thing for this, you know, for any team, always. Recruiting is something that's hard to follow because you just see some of these guys that come in from the high school ranks and then they hit the college and – some, some of them work out, a lot of them do, but then some of them don't. You don't want to put too much on them to where they're, you know, the pressure's too much. But this guy, this guy's been fun to watch, and he has delivered on all the expectations. Still hard to believe that he's 17 years old, <laughs> supposed to be a senior in high school, and he's out there doing things. You know, the most impressive thing to me is the maturity level that this guy's got of understanding the football. It's one thing to be really athletic. But to go put it into play in this environment where you're not just fast, but you're able to track the football really well. You're finding ways to get behind the secondary, get open, adjust to, to throws, and really helping his quarterback. You know, it, those are the things that you learn as you age uh, at that position. And for him to go out there and kind of already have that established as, as 17 as a freshman – uh, it's been really impressive. Three games in. Again, Ryan Williams, the top receiver to this point for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Again, we invite your phone calls for the next hour. If you'd like to join us, give us a call at 877-202-BAMA. And right now, we will go to the phones. We'll go to Albertville, where Bud joins us now. Roll Tide, Bud. Hey. Little, uh, Ryan Williams, the deuce, the one that's impressed me the most, he scores every time he gets, hold, gets the ball. Yeah, he does. I mean, every time he's got an opportunity to get involved with the game plan, you know that uh, Jalen Milrow, the style of offense that we have, uh, what Coach DeBoer has implemented, really playing to the strengths of what Jalen Milrow has. Obviously, a lot of quarterback design runs, and Jalen making a lot of plays with his feet to extend uh, opportunities, especially in those early games when the offensive line really wasn't intact fully. We had a lot of guys that were playing around in different positions, but I did like the, the deuce uh, reference <laughs> from Chris Stewart in that, you know, shout out to David Palmer. It's, uh, it's fun to see a guy that's out there just, just as electric. We talked about the comparisons to a lot of different receivers. Alabama has become a university that was always known for running backs and being, in, you know, lining up and running the ball and making guys quit. And uh, has with as offenses have evolved, Alabama's offense has, has done the same thing is we've turned into a university that puts a lot of uh, talent at the wide receiver position in the NFL. And now Ryan Williams is that next guy. I keep hearing Julio Jones. He is not built like Julio Jones by any stretch of the imagination. But the impact, I think, is what they're talking about of walking in as a freshman and being that dominant force for an offense so early in his career is really what the comparison is all about for Julio because as soon as Julio showed up on, on campus, everybody knew he was wide receiver one. And Ryan Williams, after the last two years, we just haven't had that guy that could really be a deep threat. You know, be a guy that can, that can create space, get behind defenses. We had some great wide receivers. Uh, Jermaine Burton was one of them that was able to make a lot of plays, but none of them were those guys that you really had to respect from a secondary standpoint of, this guy can run by me at any point in time. Ryan Williams is now that guy for this offense. Uh, and it just opens up so much more for Kalen DeBoer and this staff to do because they've got to respect number two wherever he's lined up. And he's talked about it as well, and maybe even on his podcast, The New Wave. Uh, he's the same size as Devontae Smith, so he's gone around. He wants to know the exact nutrition plan Devontae had <laughs> while he was at Alabama. He wants to do all the same things in the weight room that he did. That's pretty high praise uh, for Devontae Smith and oh. knowing that Ryan Williams wants to emulate everything he did in Tuscaloosa. You know, I hope he doesn't do it. I hope he adds some pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Devontae Smith goes out there, you are just afraid he's going to break in half. He's just, but 
Heisman Trophy winning wide receiver. Yeah. It's kind of hard to argue with if you want to emulate your game after a guy. He's probably a pretty good one, pretty good one to go do it at. But I watched Devontae Smith yesterday yeah. <laughs> just get absolutely waylaid, and he just does. I hope he is. I hope he's able to put some pounds on and still, you know, still retain the athleticism and the speed that he's got. But he's, you know, what Devontae did at in college is, you know, if you if that's what you're shooting for, it's a pretty good goal. It's a it's a lofty one, but. He's on the right track so far. Look forward to seeing him keep it up for the Crimson Tide. That is freshman phenom Ryan Williams of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Thank you to Bud for the call. Again, we invite your phone calls, 877-202-BAMA, the number to dial. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. But it doesn't really matter because they got four touchdowns already with 3.05 to go. Bama in two minutes. Haynes again. Haynes in a foot race. Haynes beyond midfield. Haynes still turning. Tonight's next question brought to you by J&J Apparel. Be sure to come by J&J Apparel, 1926 University Boulevard, this Thursday, September 26th, from 5.30 to 6.30 to meet Alabama men's basketball guard Latrell Reitzel Jr. You can shop, shop and also talk shop with Bama's best all season long with Tide Thursday at J&J Apparel, your trusted source for Bama gear. Online at jnjapparel.net, RTR with J&J. Once again, we'll go right back to the phone lines and this time we'll go to Mountain Brook where Hal joins us now. Roll Tide, Hal. Roll Tide. I'm from Mountain Brook. Mountain Brook. We had this Mountain debate Brook. before you came on. We said, is it Mountain Brook or Mountainville? And our producer swore it was Mountain Brook. So Hal, I knew, I knew it was you, knew I knew it was you as, uh, as soon as he said Hal. I was like, there's definitely, he definitely Hal from Mountainville. <laughs> hey, Corey. Hey, Hal. <laughs> oh. What you got? I wanted to ask you your, your comments on uh, Derek Henry yesterday and specifically where he has to be or what, where he has to go to, to get in the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, I think he's probably uh, well on his way. I don't know if he's passed. Is he past the 10,000-yard mark at this point? I, I think he's getting pretty close. But we'll look it up. I think what, what he's done, especially at his time from when he was at Tennessee, I mean, the offense ran through – through Derrick Henry, um, and I think he's he's easily one of the best backs and one of the biggest impact players um, in the NFL in an era where the running back has just seen a, a solid decline. You, what guys are getting paid at that position? How much use they're using? You got the now you've got these running quarterbacks that are running these you know spread offenses, but. Over this – into this year, if you look at the stats of what the NFL has looked like, the running backs have gotten uh, involved in the game a lot more than they have over the last five or six years. I mean, I would say winning a championship would definitely help. But, I mean, he's – I think he's won an MVP or he's gotten pretty – he's been in the runnings. I mean, he's a guy that is – may. The team is him, We're, especially when he was at Tennessee. There wasn't a lot of weapons, a lot of guys that were uh, other options for the Tennessee Titans. Um, he, he's just – I think he's got a really good shot at Offensive Player of the Year. Is that what you said? That's what 2020, first-team All-Pro. I mean, I think he's got a phenomenal chance to be in the, uh, in the Hall of Fame. I just – you watched him yesterday just absolutely run through Dallas. Um, it was one of, the, one of the better games of the weekend. I, it got a little bit closer than what it, everybody expected it to because Baltimore jumped out to a pretty early lead. But seeing what he's able to do, move into a different team, leaves Tennessee, goes to Baltimore this year, and uh, he's really making an impact. He's, he's a fun one to watch. He's still, he still seems like he's got plenty of gas in the tank too. He's just stiff-arming everybody. Those are the best highlights from, from Alabama is when you get to watch some Derrick Henry highlights. Absolutely. One of the absolute best in the NFL, Derrick Henry from Alabama and originally from Ulee, Florida. We will continue talking about the Crimson Tide and what's coming up on Saturday against Georgia. And I want to remind you, if you're coming to Tuscaloosa for the game, make sure, of course, you're there early for Vector Security Champions Lane. It is the best pregame fan fest in the country. Following the Walk of Champions, country music superstar Lauren Elena. She'll take the stage for a free pregame concert. We'll also have all the early games on the largest outdoor LED screens in Tuscaloosa starting right after college game day ends at 11.30 a.m. along with live music, food trucks, and, of course, ice-cold beer in the Legends Lounge Beer Garden where there's never a cover charge. Visit championslane.com.
www.ftrmedia.com each week for more details. If you'd like to join us on the show, give us a call, 877-202-BAMA. Back with more Crimson Tide Rewind next. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Haynes, the running back to the right. Milrow gets the snap, trying to avoid the rush. Steps forward, fires a pass, catches made, breaking a tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, Kobe Prentice, the Calera native, adds to the Bama lead. It's a seven-point advantage with the extra point pending. Not only are we taking questions from the phone, submit questions online to the Alabama Media Group Twitter line at UA underscore CTSN. Brought to you by AL.com, your source for SEC sports. But right now we're going to go right back to the phones and talk to one of our favorites on the show from Birmingham. Mike joins us now. Roll Tide, Mike. Roll Tide all the way to the tide. Roll Tide is coming static. First, uh, Jerry Jones. You should have gotten Derrick Henry. I don't know what you think you're not getting Derrick Henry, man. Come on, man. That will help Dallas out tremendously. I don't know. He needs – Derrick Joe needs to get his head down. Who's going to the game for Saturday? Alabama takes on Georgia. We're geared up to take down the Bulldogs. What Kentucky uh, trying to do, we're going to pick up where they left out. We're going to take out Georgia big time. I'm thinking the score 27-17 Alabama with Georgia. We're going to hold them on the 20 points. We're going to help – hey, we're, we're, we're going to put them in chicken, send them up so with a loss. Bama will win, and they'll move up in the polls. Road tie, Bama all the way. They're going to play Texas for the SEC championship. I'm guaranteeing it. All right, now, guys. Hey, appreciate it, Mike. Mike I was like right it. last was it year, tw- yeah, tw- Was he? Oh, yeah. I mean, he laid it all out after the Texas loss. That yeah. We're going to do exactly what we did. Yeah, that's right. For the that's SEC right. championship. That's right. I like the optimism that he always has. It's, it's just going to continue. 27-17, I think, is what the score uh, he's predicting for Saturday. Yeah. Okay. That's a uh, – that's going to be – I mean, you look at the way that the – Georgia hasn't allowed a touchdown at all this season. Not a single one. All they've allowed is six field goals on defense. So, that means 27 points has got to come from somewhere. And this Alabama offense has been putting up numbers, and they've been scoring a lot of touchdowns. So, I think we're getting a great matchup from this Alabama offense and this Georgia defense. Uh, we're going to see who budges first. You know, it's is. This is uh, the toughest test that Alabama's offense has faced so far this season. But, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is you can't lose. We've seen what this offense does. There's a lot of boomer busts, a lot of big plays, explosive plays. And so you can't get, you know, you can't get behind too much. If, if Georgia goes out there and puts together some methodical drives, puts some points on the board, we got a couple three and outs. I think that happened. It's happened a lot this season. You go out there and, you, you either score or you go three and out. And you can't get uh, discouraged by those three and outs because that's just the way this offense is operating, and that's how that's the world that we're going to live in. That's okay as long as those explosive plays continue to happen. we got to be able to be prepared if those things don't come to fruition like they have through the first three games. How are you going to sustain some drives, put some, you know, eat some clock, all, you know, eat some time off the clock and keep this Georgia offense um, off the field? But, you know, they are not the same offense that we've seen in the past couple of years. They lost a lot of weapons. It's going to be hard. It's hard to replace a lad McConkey and a, a Brock Bowers. And I think they're still trying to figure out what their offense from their side looks like as well. Carson Beck's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's got weapons over there. They're just still trying to fill each other out and figure that offense out. And I think that there's been a lot of very vanilla game plans up until this point. So I'm excited to see what Saturday, because there's no reason to hold anything back. This is the biggest game of the year. Number two versus number four. Under the lights at Saban Field at Bryant Denny Stadium. It should be a fantastic Saturday coming up, not just in Tuscaloosa, but really all around the state at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. This place is ready for football, fun, and great food, and your big game headquarters all season long more than 60 televisions dialed into your favorite team's games you'll never miss a play of the action especially tonight with two monday night football games going on at the same time if you're going to the big game make sure you visit your local bomb howers before or after for legendary fun legendary food and legendary celebrations we'll continue with more crimson tide rewind next this is the crimson tide sports network from learfield jam miller the running back to the left of mill road he'll get the handoff He'll stay on his feet. He'll turn it up. He'll go down the sideline. 30, cutting it back. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Alabama. Jam Miller, 56 yards. Icing on the cake as the tide leads it now. 34 to 16. 
Wouldn't you love to see a run like that from Jam Miller coming up on Saturday against Georgia? Chris Stewart on the call of that touchdown against South Florida. He'll put the game away a couple weeks ago in Tuscaloosa. If you'd like to join tonight's show, you can also submit your question to us on the Alabama Media Group Twitter line at UA underscore CTSN, brought to you by AL.com, your source for SEC sports. Right now, we'll once again go right back to the phone lines. We'll go to Pace, Florida, where Parker joins us now. Roll Tide, Parker. Roll Tide, Roger. How are you, my friend? Doing very well. Good to hear you again, Parker. Good, good to I would love to be in Tuscaloosa come Saturday night. Oh, my God. But I'm saying Bama's still great, but Georgia only scored 28. Bama 31, Georgia 28. Hey, I like that. What do you say, Bama 28? Georgia 28. Georgia 28. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Bama 31. What about say, Parker, you can't be turning on us like that. Um, <laughs> and, then, I, I, and then Chris is going to be saying good guys on top the whole game. I want that, too. That'd be I, good. I, I'll take that all day long. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a fun matchup. I mean, this is this is what you were waiting for. You know, the last couple of weeks, we haven't had those, you know, really good, solid games. We've had a couple, but it just feels like we're finally in the meat of college football where we got some good games. Uh I, I'm, I can't wait for this one to see. This is going to be the first test for both of these teams. Obviously, Georgia had Kentucky, and it was a lot closer than what yeah. you thought. But, I mean, it, I, think, I still think Georgia was able to win that ball game without having to do too much. They, they found a way. Kentucky always gives them fits up there. But this is going to be with game day showing up, with all the uh, extra people that are going to be in attendance for the game, all the – all, this is just building up to be uh, one of the best college football environments, 6 o'clock in Tuscaloosa on Saturday night. Uh, there's no telling what's going to happen. I think both teams are going to come prepared, and um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. These are two like-minded programs, you know, and, and they've got a lot of pride in the, the dominant. You know, they've been both been dominant in the SEC for the last, you know, five or six years, you know, Alabama for a while, but since Kirby took over at Georgia, these are the two premier programs of this conference that is what I think five of the top six or six of the top seven are uh, in the polls are from the SEC. So uh, there's a lot riding on this game. And I know that uh, both coaches are aware and both teams are aware. And even though there is the expanded playoff this year and also it's a new route to Atlanta yeah. taking the top two teams in terms of the conference standings, still the loser of this ball game. not necessarily the season is over, but the road did not only get to Atlanta, but the playoff becomes that much harder when you consider how tough of schedules both Alabama and Georgia still have to go this year. Yeah, there's still plenty of tough games to go. And the thing you got to think about, too, is with this 12-team playoff, the, the top – four conference champions are seeds one through four. That's not the top four ranked teams right. in the country. So if you miss the opportunity to go play for the SEC championship and you don't get that that title to where you are one of those top four seeds where you get that first week by, Alabama might be the number five seed. And then, you've, you know, you're hosting a game, but you got to play an extra game. Now you're looking at a 16-game season. So how critical is it? that you get that that title where you do get another bye week, essentially a third bye week through the season, uh, gives you a big leg up to try to find a way to win this, uh, to win a national championship in this new format. This is a lot of games for these players, and this one means a lot, especially with what's coming down the road. But you're right. One loss doesn't knock you out of the top 12. Your, your hopes are still alive. But you would like to be able to come out on the other side as the, as, you know, victorious. And then you've got some more games that you – tougher games that you're going to have to continue to play. But losing one puts the pressure on the rest of the season. And you've still got a pretty tough schedule ahead. So it's Alabama and Georgia coming up on Saturday. We'll continue talking about that, plus some other news and notes from around the Southeastern Conference when we return. Crimson Tide Rewind is presented by the Alabama Department of Public Health, who reminds Alabama, don't wait, vaccinate. This is the, Al the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Tied into the right side as well. Bernard going in motion, stops. He's basically another blocker, keeping himself Milro, trying to get to the edge. He'll get to the three. He'll get to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Jalen Milro from three yards out finds the end zone of the Crimson Tide, adds to its lead. 13-3 here in Madison with 9.43 to go first half. 
This season, make sure you stay cool when you purchase a limited edition Alabama Yeti. These vintage Yeti cups only available at Champions Lane and program stands all around Saban Field at Bryant Denny Stadium. Elevate your game day with Yeti. Once again, we're going back to the phones, and this time we go to Pelham, where Jason joins us now. Roll Tide, Jason. Jason, are you with us? Might no longer have Jason joining us on the show as we again continue getting ready for the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Georgia Bulldogs. And uh, Corey, wanted to get your thoughts quickly on some SEC action we saw over the weekend, briefly mentioned at the top. Uh, the most notable matchup was really Tennessee at Oklahoma. The Vols get the win. Defense, once again, looked pretty strong. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing that Josh Heupel has really focused in on these last couple years. Tennessee's had a phenomenal offensive team it's the defense that has really been the, the the point of contention for them they've it's kept them out of really taking that next step competing for the sec championships beating those teams you beating the georgias you know when we had divisions trying to represent the east that was really the downfall for them uh but you you look at what they've been able to do so far this year that defense has really stepped up and uh and really just handcuffed oklahoma on saturday Ended up getting the win, 25 to 15. That offense is uh, is really clicking. We're starting to see some of this Josh Heupel tr uh, coaching tree. You know, South Florida's head yep. coach comes from comes from the Josh Heupel tree. It just seems like Tennessee, as a program and a university as a whole, has kind of gotten in line. They've had some disconnect over the last 15 to 20 years, and uh, you know now they seem to be headed in the right direction. They're going to be they're going to be a team to watch. I think they've got a really good opportunity to make uh, this 12 team playoff this year. One game I was able to watch all of on this past Saturday was down on the Plains, Arkansas at Auburn. Uh, the Razorbacks pick up a 10-point victory in a game where there were a lot of mistakes really on both sides of the ball. Both teams making a lot of mistakes for Man, the Razorbacks that was an ugly and the Tigers. Game. Yeah. That was an ugly game. <laughs> hey, there's no other way to put it. You've seen all the, the, the highlights from the press conferences from Coach Freeze, and I was listening and watching that game as well, and it just I, I, I kind of got lost how many turnovers there were. Auburn had so many opportunities. I think they had a total of, what, five or six turnovers, fumbles when you're almost into the end zone and interceptions. They're just trying to find uh, trying to find some solutions to the turnover problem. They're leading the nation. I think they've got 13 or so turnovers through the first three or four games this year. And uh, you can't win ball games that way. It doesn't matter how good you are. And I think even though – even with – I think the frustrating thing from an Auburn standpoint, if you're a fan, is – you were – you turned the ball over three times in the first half. You were down seven. Like, all these things that could have gone against you did, and you were only down seven. You had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to be in that ball game, and they just couldn't find a way to get it done. So, Hugh Freeze and, and uh, the Auburn Tigers got a lot of work to do to really, you know, regroup, figure out how to finish this season because you want to talk about tough schedules. Oh, yeah. They got one of the toughest from here on out. I mean, you got – you had Vandy and Louisiana Monroe on their schedule that you're looking at as like hopeful wins. And now those, you know, that Vandy game is not looking as easy as it, as it was earlier in the season. So they got, they got some tough tests. They're going to get some tough together. Well, and it's two teams meeting coming up this week, Auburn and Oklahoma, that both played two quarterbacks yep. this past week and losses in conference play. So there's a ton to figure out. There's a lot of intrigue about that matchup, Oklahoma and Auburn. Yeah, there is. And you, you had a lot of expectations for Oklahoma hosting Tennessee at home, end up same exact kind of – they're – Two teams that are pretty similar. I mean, I think Oklahoma had three turnovers uh, in the first half as well. They end up going to their freshman backup quarterback, seeing if he can spark uh, a little bit of offense, and he did. The thing, the difference is between these two teams is I think that Oklahoma found their quarterback for the rest of the season uh, in, their, in their true freshman who went in there. He looked like a little bit of a deer in the headlights uh, early on in that game. But once he settled in, they started finding some game, you know, some play calls that really suit his ability to go out there and make plays. And you could tell when they started doing a little bit of a hurry up, going quick, using his feet, and then his arm kind of came alive. He kind of settled into that position. He just has a little bit of a, of a grit about him. He was diving for first downs. He was going over the top, flipping into the end zone, trying to make plays. That team is going to rally around that quarterback, and you're going to see if he can carry it over from last week in that environment. It's a tough task when you ask him to go in to play one of the top ten teams in the country. Uh, but I think that Oklahoma has found their guy going forward. You know, Arnold for Oklahoma, he's a good quarterback. He's a, it's amazing that he goes in and 
turns the ball over the way that he does. And uh, But I think – Auburn's only a two and a half point dog at home against Oklahoma. This is going to be a heck of a matchup. You know, you, that, that shows me that people think that Auburn's going to find a way to turn this thing around from what we saw last week against Arkansas. It'll be really be interesting. And of course, uh, Tennessee on the schedule, South Carolina on Alabama's schedule coming up in October. And as you mentioned a moment ago, Vanderbilt and Missouri also on the schedule. We've kind of known for about a year the Missouri game is going to be tough, but Vanderbilt is off to about as good a start as you can have. A win against Virginia Tech. Yes, a loss against Georgia State, but played Missouri to the wire and into overtime. Yeah, that's the thing about these programs is like anybody can beat you on any given Saturday. And, George, and Vanderbilt's done that. They beat Virginia Tech in their opener really kind of opened some eyes for everybody of like, hey, this team might be for real. Drop the ball a little bit against Georgia State. That's the hard part about college football. And some of these younger guys is keeping them focused against teams that are not those premier games. And I think that's what really bit Vanderbilt. But taking Missouri down to the wire in Missouri, I mean, it was a t an incredible game. Clark Lee is a great coach. He is. Uh, he's found himself a quarterback that goes out there and competes. Is very athletic. They. They. Uh, they're going to be a tough out for anybody. They are not the Vanderbilt of old this year, uh, and they're going to give everybody all they want whenever whenever Vanderbilt comes up on the schedule. October fifth, it'll be Alabama in Nashville to take on Vanderbilt. But September twenty eighth, it's the Alabama Crimson Tide against the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll talk more about that when we return. You're listening to Crimson Tide Rewind live from Bomb Howard's Victory Grill in Vestavia Hills. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Now on play action, looking Milrow firing left side, has a man open, it is caught, it is a touchdown, Alabama. Jeremy Bernard makes the grab, and the Crimson Tide pushes the lead to 20-3. to three. You know, against Wisconsin, that really felt like the knockout blow, and it wasn't even halftime yet. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the difference that we're seeing in this coaching staff. You see uh, Kalen DeBoer with... A minute left to go before halftime or 46 seconds left to go. You go out there and you – and that's the faith that they've got in, in Jalen Milrow as well. Hey, we got 46 seconds. We got plenty of time to go put some more points on the board. Let him sling it. Two passes. You got him in the end zone and really put a nail in the coffin for that game, it feels like. And uh, I think that Jalen Milrow really likes – this new coaching staff. Not that he didn't love the oh, – I think he's got a lot of respect and love Coach Saban and all those guys, but I feel like this is a – he just seems to be playing with a different amount of swagger. He feels confident in what he's doing. He's not looking over his shoulder last season. You know, everybody's calling. A lot of fans were calling for backup quarterbacks to come in. And this season, he doesn't feel like he's got anybody behind him. This is his team. They're giving him the reins to go out there and make plays. And they're calling, calling great games to really play into his strengths. It's been fun to watch how he has developed uh, since last season, even from the SEC championship and the semifinal from last year. How much better he has gotten. We heard about a, a lot of that in the offseason, how much growth he has had as a quarterback, and uh, you've really seen it th through these first three games. That's the Prescription for Success presented by Payless Drugs, your locally owned family pharmacy with four locations in Birmingham. Payless can hand your prescriptions over the counter solutions and home delivery. Payless at mynewpharmacy.com. Crimson Tide Rewind is presented by the Alabama Department of Public Health, your minds, Bama fans. Don't wait, vaccinate. Back to wrap things up for this edition edition of Crimson Tide Rewind when we return. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Coming up Saturday, it's number two, Georgia, number four, Alabama. That's what's on tap next for Bama. It's brought to you by Bud Light. Bud Light, proud sponsor of Alabama Athletics. It is easy to drink. It is easy to enjoy, and we are certainly going to enjoy what's coming up. Starting at 6.30 with a kickoff of the game, 3.30 will be the airtime for us here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Uh, three hours, uh, still probably not enough time to get ready for this matchup. Corey, we could talk for days about what's coming up between Alabama and Georgia. Yeah, we definitely could, and it's going to start early. we got game day showing up at Tuscaloosa. That, that town is going to be rocking come 6 o'clock for kickoff time. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's uh, – this is a matchup that we've all grown accustomed to anticipating. When we saw them come out, be on the schedule for this team, new coach, new staff, this is uh, one that everybody's got circled. The nation's going to be paying attention because, you know, whenever you get number two and number four facing off, this is going to be a fun one to watch. I I'm, I'm excited to see. There's a lot of things that got to go our way. We've got to eliminate a lot of mistakes, you know, and – and uh, try to create some turnovers. You know, Georgia is a team that has not f had a turnover at all so far this season. They've 
They've turned the ball over on downs right before a half, you know, before halftime against Tennessee State. You know, that was the only turnover. No, no fumbles, no interceptions. This is an opportunity for this swarm defense to go out there and really put their stamp on uh, this season is go out there and try to turn Carson Beck over. There's going to be plenty of opportunities because I think they're going to be airing the ball out. So these DBs better be ready to go. Better be ready to go. Again, Georgia is led by Kirby Smart, who had time previously on Alabama staff. Uh, you got to know him quite yeah. well during your Tuscaloosa days. Uh, we know, obviously, different sideline now, all of that. But just uh, what could you tell people about Kirby Smart and how he impacted you in Alabama? Uh, he was one of the best. Co- I enjoyed playing for him. He's a player's coach. And you can see him when he goes out there, his interactions with, these te- with his team. Team. He's one of those guys that demands excellence, but he also can turn around and celebrate with you. And, you know, that was that was what I always remembered about him was he, he would get on to you when you needed to uh, to hear whatever he had to say. But then he'd turn around and love on you whenever it was whenever you did something right He'd celebrate with you, get excited for you. He's just got an amazing amount of energy for 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 his for a guy that, you know, I won't say his age because he's not that old. <laughs> he's not that old. He's only, I realized the other day that he's only like 10 years older yeah. than me. It's he like, intercepted a pass I, from Peyton Manning. I know, yeah, I know. He's not Georgia that old. Game. He's yeah. just like, but the, the, to sustain it in this day and age in college football, in, a, in an air, in, I feel like you're losing a lot of quality coaches based on what it requires to be a head coach with NIL and the transfer portal. Then you got a guy like Kirby Smart and, and Kalen DeBoer, two of the best that actually are there for the right reasons. They love football, and Kirby loves football, and you, and you can just tell he's always very intense, but he knows how to relate to these younger guys where these, these people, you know, these players are excited to play for him. He's got a, some, a good staff over there. Glenn Schumann, who's over there, defensive coordinator. He was a GA when I was at Alabama as well. Uh, he never said a word when he was in Tuscaloosa, but now he's defense coordinator at Georgia, one of the best programs in the country. Uh, but Kirby's Kirby's one of those guys that I, I respect a, a ton. He's going to be fun. Uh, he, he can coach for as long as he absolutely wants to. It's going to be fun. So, again, the Crimson Tide will be a home underdog at Bryant Denny Stadium. And, of course, uh, Nick Saban will be on college game day, and he will get to make the pick in Tuscaloosa in front of the fans. What do you think? Does he go for the Tide or for Georgia? Make some rat poison. Well, there. yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I think that's the if he goes anything but Tuscaloosa, you know, but Alabama on his picks, it's definitely a motivating factor. I heard Tyler Booker say he's like, I don't even watch game day. I don't want to hear any of that. Des uh, Des Howard last weekend picks USC in that game against his alma mater in Michigan. And you see what happened. Michigan wins, goes out and wins that ball game. Maybe on purpose, maybe not. Who knows? But. Uh, I, I think it's just going to be an interesting matchup. This is going to be a fun game to watch. Two good teams that strength on strength and a lot of history between both of these teams. It's going to be a fun game. I can't wait to see what happens on Saturday. We look forward to it. Corey, we'll talk to you pregame. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Appreciate it. That is Corey Reamer, and I'm Roger Hoover. You've been listening to Crimson Tide Rewind presented by the Alabama Department of Public Health live from Baumhauer's here in Vestavia Hills. If you missed any portion of tonight's show, you can always catch it on demand on the Alabama Insider Podcast. You can download and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Again, coming up Saturday, 6.30 kickoff. Radio airtime at 3.30 across the network. Don't forget, we'll have Crimson Drive driven by NASCAR Tuesday and Thursday at 2 o'clock here on the network. And Wednesday night, it's Hey Coach and the Kalen DeBoer Show at 6 from Baumhauer's in Tuscaloosa. But for Cooper Rollins, Jerry Kelly back at our Learfield Studios, engineer producer Todd Robbins, and Corey Reamer, I'm Roger Hoover saying thanks for listening and roll Todd.